2014, somebody apparently decided that playing monkey shines in their Macintosh emulator wasn't good enough. Although by wasn't good enough, they meant not working at all. Very few games benefit from bugs that make the screen totally white, although I guess games like Super Seducer could have probably benefited from it. So disappointingly, I could not play a game that I loved. Thanks to constant back and forth between an emulator, ResEdit, PlayerPro, the original developer Mark Elliott, who helped provide some background in the original non-256 colorified graphics, the add-on world competition winner Philip Roy, and thanks to your goddess. That was my GitHub account, by the way. The joke is that I'm talking about me. Never mind. We now have a port, sorry, recreation of that game that runs on modern systems. Maybe. Hopefully. Yeah, I'm one person. My test field of machines isn't all that big. So, um, I thought, why not do an LP of something I actually program myself? Please keep in mind that Monkey Shines is not an original creation by me. This was a game released by Fantasoft back in the days before Mac OS X, before Twitter, before Facebook, before bloody MySpace. Speaking of the Dark Ages, I think we've heard enough about my rambling and we should just try to play the first world spooked. This will just give us a good introduction to the game. Remember, you can download the Java port from a link here. Regarding legality, I don't know, but no one is physically capable of even making money off of this anymore. No one from the original team. Um, the original can't even run on newer systems. I'm not charging any money for it. And I have the blessing of Mark, the original programmer, who states that as long as it is free to play, free as in actually free, then uh, fuck it, leave it on GitHub. Hang on a minute, this isn't the right music. There we go. Everything in this game kills you. Well, not everything. The moving pyramids tend to. Anything that's moving kills you, except the conveyor belts. This is an old game, so it has a rather simplistic winning condition. Get all the red keys. Find the exit door and leave. And apparently dance if you hold down left and right at the same time. That's technically a glitch, but I don't want to fix it. It's too funny to fix. This would be a good time to point out the differences between this port and the original. You could pick up that key in the original game in the port, I don't have pixel perfect collision for goodies, which are keys and fruits and other things like that. Only for the monsters. Yay, hidden little alcove and uh, an extra life we don't need since I have set it to play testing and have an infinite amount of them. Infinite Lives is represented by a Thunderbird because it's my own damn port, and if I want a Thunderbird, there's a Thunderbird. Now, as you can probably see already, I wanted to let the level do most of the talking for me. This isn't a linear path that you might expect in something like Mario. Well, linear with small bonus areas. This is more of I don't really want to say Castlevania, it's not like that game at all, but the exploration of the level feels a lot more uh, like Castle... Well, this level in particular definitely has a Halloween atmosphere to it, but um, more cartoony. What I'm talking about is the design of the levels themselves. You're exploring an entire world and deciding which areas you want to go now. We're going to find that we tend to be uh, put on a certain path that we have to keep going in order to reach the end, um, just the way the level is designed, but in some places we have choices. Right here we don't really have a choice because all those skulls will kill us in just a few moments. But 
here we're going to be reaching our first choice because you can either go left here and explore the level in that direction or you can go up and then oh well go up carefully and just what okay that was close and explore another part of the level. the wing basically prevents fall damage self-explanatory doesn't protect you from the thing from the Adams family, so we still avoid that. And uh, bees are the only thing in the game that can hurt you but not kill you. The energy bar at the top shows that. The shield basically allows you to go through any other enemy without getting killed by it, which is nice. We can actually get past these guys. And we've made our decision to go in this turn. Well, actually, I made the decision because I'm the one playing it and you're just watching. So whatever you decided, I presume there's a 50% chance you're very disappointed right now. Doesn't last forever, though, that shield. Thankfully, we don't need it anymore. Okay, <laughs> never mind. Oh, that was close. We'll go right. Oh, yeah, can't go that way. This is what I meant by saying it's not exactly like a full exploration because you're still limited in what you can do. Like here, I couldn't go that way until I went down here, and but then I decided to go this way instead of going left. We are kind of clued in to other parts of the level we should be aware of when we see rooms like this where we can't access all of the room right now. I like that little bouncing animation that I has. This entire level is different from the other four, at least in this recreation, because this I made by scratch using the level editor that I also programmed for um, the Java port. The other levels were run through a translator that automatically converted the level data. And now I've got a shield so I can get past that um, Frankenstein-ish monkey on the left or a gorilla or ape you know technically all three of those are very different anyway that's that's um that's a, a completely different lesson and i am not a biologist so i should probably be careful what false information i spread on a let's play for a video game no one has even heard of by the way, the blue keys open up a bonus door, and oh, this is <laughs> this is gonna be fun. Uh, th things like this are why I'm very, very thankful that I have a playtesting mode in this version of the game. Grab the wing because you don't want to fall down, make it, and then die. Uh, well, <laughs> I can stay calm. Really, um, I would not have been able to do this Let's Play if I didn't have a play testing mode because I suck. But this time I did it perfect. Oh, uh, right. Forgot to grab the wing. And now I... Uh. Well, this isn't one of my best days, is it? Then again, I'm not exactly someone who tends to play arcade games very much. I made it. The physics of this uh, port are actually black box recreated. So it took a while to get things down. So for example, falling through that area I just did wouldn't send me through the floor. And now that we've explored the right side, we can take the left side that we didn't take before, come down here and then, I don't know, we can either go right or we can go left. The choices we make in exploration will decide whether we have to hit certain parts of this world multiple times and, of course, how long it takes to finish the world. I've made a judgment call to not go to the right because I think it's going to get me stuck and I'm going to go to the left first. Hopefully this won't turn out to be a terrible, terrible, terrible idea. I don't think it will. The exploration part, the fact that you can choose which paths you want to go through, in general in this game they tend to fall into um, two main paths through every world. 
and one of the paths takes you to the exit door and the other one takes you to all the keys for the exit door, so... And that sound was me getting the last blue key for the bonus door. So you want to go down certain paths first so that you can finish the, the world quicker or you don't have to go through certain parts more than one time. For instance, because I made that decision early on to go up, I was able to get all the blue keys so that I'll be prepared for the bonus door that would only be open if I already got them. And I know this because I played this world before. And in case you're wondering, you have no idea where the exit door and the bonus doors are until you've gotten all the keys because they don't even appear until you have them. So yeah, I am going left now. And since I have an infinite number of lives, I'm going to grab that anyway because it improves my score in the upper right corner. Sorry, upper left corner. Now, I'm assuming that the bones at the bottom of the screen and the right show that there was another player who went down this area and didn't make it. Probably forgot to jump. I have a decision to make. If you are paying close attention, you probably see that there's a little bit of, um, I'm not gonna call it blood, I'm gonna say red paint on the uh, lower left side, and that takes us to a familiar area, which if you were here before and you remembered, you'd be like, what did that line of skulls on the left side ever go to? You might think there's a hidden bonus room somewhere, and I can't jump over all four of those bombs at the same time. In hindsight, rooms like this are actually rather rare on Monkey Shines because all the bonus stuff tends to be saved for the actual bonus level. Whereas this is a completely optional room with no keys at all. I actually recreated this very room in my debug world, mainly because I wanted to test how far the conveyor belts would allow me to jump to make sure I could clear those four bombs and to make sure I could jump onto the things in the bottom if the conveyor belt was moving me in the opposite direction. One other thing I was working on when recreating the engine for this game was that in the original, if you um, jump on one of those collapsible tiles, every two jumps makes it collapse by one unit. Why is he walking on air? A funny consequence of the way sprites move is that they don't care about the concept of ground. They'll just move wherever. So because of that, we, oh gosh, no, I hate this room. Yeah, this level's been pretty easy so far. It was the first level of the game, and it was the demo level, but this particular jump here is probably the most annoying part of this level because you have to jump over the first candle and then not jump into the bottom of the second candle. Because apparently Bonzo is just as vulnerable to getting burned in rather unfortunate places as he is to having, as you could just see there, his head smack into a plate. Don't, don't try to get logic, just relax. Anyway, let's see if I can do this properly. Be thankful you're not the one playing, or actually if you enjoy this game, be unthankful you're not the one playing it and just download the recreation and play it yourself. Those um, uh, Halloween little pumpkin things, they're moving in a synchronized way and I think that's a good time to interject about a concept that I was having problems with when I first started coding this. Um, when I originally had double precision arithmetic, those pumpkins would, um, in a debug level where I recreated that very scene, would move, um, oh, you're not going to trick me, those are fall throughs, you're going to burn me alive. Anyway, those, um, the debug world I made with those pumpkins, they moved left slower than they moved right. and. Okay, I got it. I'm just gonna keep falling here. And once, okay, now we're at a low, I can, I am not gonna be able to finish my explanation about the pumpkins, am I? 
Anyway, this is a bonus door. It takes you to a bonus level, which is a maze. And, well, I'm probably going to go through every single one of these paths to get every single fruit in here because I honestly don't know why I did it that way. I think it's just because I was, like, really hungry that day. You know when you have those fruit cravings and you just see, like, you want to get so much fruit, then you go home and then you try to eat it and then you realize you didn't actually want it as much. And then it goes bad because you can't eat it fast enough. And then you bang your head against the ceiling and you constantly keep jumping. Yeah, it's like that. This is awfully suspicious. Well, that answers that question. I don't even think this jump is even possible. And it's probably not possible because of what I said before. Yeah. Because of what I said before. Um, I had to recreate this level from scratch using a level editor because the level editor in um, in the original does load up for me on the Macintosh emulator. It doesn't white screen like the game does, but it doesn't tell me if something is an invisible or pass through tile or not. So I have to make a guess. Thankfully, the level translator fixed that up and I didn't have to make those kinds of guesses anymore. Yeah, this isn't working. I'm probably going to keep going back and forth through this, as I said, because I'm very hungry and apparently very fruity, which isn't entirely off when I come to think about it. But anyway, um, yeah, let's go back through the bonus door. You can go back through it as many times as you want and collect as much stuff as you want. So we'll take a quick fast forward break and I only slow down to show the times I stupidly die. Oh, right. That's a times four multiplayer. It makes everything I grab give me four times the amount of stuff. And uh, just to show that, yeah, you really do fall into your death there. I don't know how the original game did it. I think in the original there was at least something that you could stand on there to make that jump. But anyway, about the pumpkins from earlier. The double precision arithmetic uh, meant that the pumpkins that were moving left were going faster than the pumpkins moving right. They would turn around, basically, before the ones on the right would turn around to move to the left. And what this ended up doing was desynchronizing them once the uh, level has been loaded up for a while. So you couldn't actually jump between them because they would end up completely out of key with each other. And that's because the double precision arithmetic had rounding errors. And now I'm done with the bonus room. So I had to go to integer base math um, computations for that. Just a little tidbit of information that before I fall to my death, okay, good, I didn't fall to my death. There was a, there was thankfully a uh, helpful conveyor belt right above the pool of lava that made it so much safer. This room isn't all that bad as long as you know not to move at all once you land. Because when Bonzo lands, he lands on a um, image of his sprite sheet that is rather thin, which gives him less of a chance of getting hit. I recreated that room in a debug level to see how bounding box collisions were working when I was programming this, and uh, they didn't work, basically. That was, um, they needed to be pixel perfect because some areas would just be impossible, and besides, it's really, really annoying if you die to something that's not even touching you, so, um, yeah. You know, for such a small game and rather very easy um, to make compared to a bunch of other things coming out, it still took me a while, given that I was also working on my own, um, trying to steal whatever time I had in my work day, to, um, to get this to even the state that it's at now. And I appreciate the fact that I get a little yum every time Bonzo grabs the fruit. He also gets the yum, if you've know, ever noticed, every time he grabs a key and a shield and a wing because Bonzo eats everything. <laughs> oh, I recognize this place. Up to the right and up, I didn't, I chose not to go through. Um, on the last playthrough, or last time I was here, I come from here, I come up, and I was like, oh, 
I don't want to go up there. I might get stuck. I wonder what was up there all this time. Oh, fuck. Um, so the, um, the exit door is going to appear in a place we already just were. I'll let you guess where that area that the exit door would otherwise appear in is going to end up being. Yes! So now the bonus is ticking down. So the longer we take to get to the exit door, the less the bonus is going to be. The exit door is just down there. Down those little pink blocks that I'm no longer capable of going down. So if I want to get to the exit door, I have to go through the entire uh, part of the level that I just went through again. Which sucks. Now, it shouldn't be too bad um, ticking away, but I should be able to get there without a problem. All I gotta do is jump over this lava pit, um, go back to where I started the game, and then, then run up here, apparently really, really fast. Sorry, this is really bugging me. That's not a tombstone. That's soap. It looks like soap. It has the bubbles on the bottom like soap. It looks like a soap bar that is sticking out of the ground. Jump over chattering teeth. Continue going left and ignore the skulls. Jump, 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 and then uh, fail horribly and kill myself. Um, now I can see why there's a skeleton down there. And uh, that was really on me. There's no skeletons where I died the second time because most people wouldn't die there. Uh, now I have to do is... Okay. Now all I have to do is jump over these candles. Well, as I said, the most annoying part of this particular level. Now we see the pumpkins in synchronization again. Once again, because of the integer mathematics. Then I guess I have to jump over this, avoid the uh, fall throughs that would otherwise kill me, avoid the very fast mouse, grab the wing, fall down a very large area, try to grab whatever fruit I can, kill myself in the lava again. This time properly jump, go past a whole room of skulls going up and down, which barely give me enough space, at, um, only when Bonzo's like really, really thin. And then jump over a bunch of collapsing platforms over a gigantic pool of lava. And then conveyor belts. And then finally I'm back to where I was. That wasn't so hard. Uh, this is what I meant by the Castlevania part. Um, well, actually, no, not really. By the exploration part. If you chose your path better, you wouldn't have had to do that. But that's what the exit door looks like. Because he's in a casino. Oh, bugger. It's negative because I was in playtesting mode. Well, oh well. Yes! I have a high score in a negatives. Goddess. Hmm. Just pretend a negative isn't there. Negative, positive, same thing. All right. Um, I've got to fix that bug that I had. Apparently, when I did this Let's Play, I found that the sound couldn't be turned off, and I found that the energy bar wasn't um, rendering properly on... Sorry, I'm not at work. I don't have to write that. All right, um, so I got I fixed the sounds. Um, yeah, I did that. I'm just trying to remember my commit message here. All right, um, fixed a few other things here. The energy bar is back to appearing, and according to the modification system, it's telling me that I modify my debug world. I don't know how, but hey, who am I to argue with with Gant? Oh yeah, I've been working on this feature branch for a while. Like I said earlier in this LP, if you can't grab, uh, I couldn't grab that red key in the beginning because there's no pixel perfect collision for goodies, only for enemies. And I was working on something, but I never finished it. I did some refactoring, but I didn't complete it because I have a life that sometimes precludes me from doing a whole bunch of stuff in case you're wondering why it takes a billion years between videos that I produce on YouTube. All between piano and, 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 and love and, 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 and joy and, and, and beautiful, beautiful lesbians. I, I just don't have the time. Anyway, let's merge this into master and then push it and um, now I can be done with this. I feel like I'm missing something. Oh, I've never finished Load Runner 2, and I didn't even stop at the third world. I only stopped at the second world, so I can't even make a Half-Life 3 joke. <laughs> <laughs>